Welcome into the CFBpod.com show. My name is Brendan Moore. Uh, today, we're going to be going over the NC State Wolfpack as they start spring ball. Uh, they started practice Tuesday, February 27th, one of the first ACC teams to really get spring practice underway. And I think NC State, there's a lot of excitement. ACC is expanding to 17 teams, so some new flavor in there with Cal, Stanford, and SMU, but also the expanded playoff a new opportunity for a team like the Wolfpack who've won consistently eight, nine games a season under Dave Doran. Uh, so I think there's a bright future for NC state with the 12 team playoff. And I kind of want to dive deep into that. These, some of these storylines have three storylines for you. The first one is, does this expanded playoff the playoff move into 12 teams? Does this provide extra motivation for NC state? Uh, in spring practice here because you know motivation can be inconsistent with teams in the spring practice if you're coming off a really good season uh maybe the motivation is not 100 there uh because you're coming off that good season there might be some complacency that should not be the case at all with nc state i think they should be extra motivated because of the loss in the pop tarts bowl and because there's more opportunity this season there's a bigger chance for NC State to get into the dance, to get in that 12-team playoff than a four-team playoff, per se. So I think NC State, I think this expanded playoff provides more opportunity for the Wolf Pack and provides more motivation here in spring practice. And especially with all the newcomers as well, I think there's 32 total newcomers uh, between true freshmen and between transfers, who we'll touch on in a little bit. Uh, well, one of the newcomers... Transfer quarterback Grayson McCall. He performed extremely well at Coastal Carolina, only through, I think, like 14 interceptions in, I believe, four or five seasons at Coastal. So he's an experienced guy. He's won a ton of games in the Sun Belt. I know it's not a power four, power five league or whatever, but McCall has experience, has experience in, in some pretty big games at the Sun Belt level. Uh, he's an accurate passer. Uh, he can run the ball. Excellent in the option game as well. But what's the ceiling with NC State? Because they had a couple of different guys at quarterback last season, kind of a revolving door. Brennan Armstrong uh, took most of the snaps, had 262 passing attempts. MJ Morris is in there, had 113 passing attempts. Both those guys are out. Now this looks like it's going to be McCall's team. Uh, so I'm interested to see how does that raise the ceiling of this NC State team? Because I think McCall is a better quarterback than MJ Morris. I think McCall is a better quarterback then Brennan Armstrong. Uh, we'll see about his running ability because Armstrong was excellent at, at tucking and running the football and showing his toughness in that respect. We'll see how much McCall uh, kind of runs with the football here. That's some, that's an answer we'll probably get uh, in the fall. But that's one of my intriguing storylines to, to kind of watch develop here over the spring practice period is how does McCall play? How does McCall develop uh, rapport with some of these receivers? And what's that ceiling of the NC State offense? with McCall at quarterback as opposed to who we saw last year with Armstrong and with MJ Morris. Uh, my third storyline I'm really watching, I think this is a huge benefit for NC State, is the continuity on the staff. I mean, we know Dave Doran's been there forever. He's been a consistent winner, has not gotten over that 10 win hump or double digit win hump, but he, you know what you're going to get from him and his teams year in and year out. He's pretty consistent. What I like is they return offensive coordinator Robert and I. They return defensive co coordinator Tony Gibson. They return everyone on their staff. Uh, so it's beneficial. I think this this is undervalued undervalued a little bit. Uh, it's beneficial when you're when uh, the guys that you recruit are still being coached by you. So if I'm a player and I get recruited by a, a certain position coach and a coordinator or even the head coach and he's still there, that's huge. And if he's going elsewhere, that means, oh, maybe I'm more willing to go elsewhere and follow him to that new school. So I think that's big for NC State in terms of uh, just continuity. Just And Doran's not necessarily coaching his coaches. You know what I mean? Uh, he's not kind of teaching him the them the systems, the, kind of the ways he does things. So there's some staff continuity, some staff familiarity. Uh, it just makes life easier, whether it be in practice, on game days. So I think that is kind of undervalued in today's college football, especially because we see coaches all the time on the move. So I think the continuity on the staff is also something to see. I think you should see uh, some smooth practices heading into the spring game, and that allows for just further development, better development, 
guys and knowing where they need to be uh, at practice on game days, kind of getting into that routine. So I love the continuity on the staff. Uh, I think the motivation should be there for NC State with the expanded playoff. And I'm curious to see Grayson McCall's ceiling and the NC State's offense's ceiling at quarterback. So the position group I'm going to have my eye on the most, obviously I talked about quarterback already. I think that's a big position, uh, but linebacker, I mean, look at what, what they lost. I mean, you had Peyton Wilson last year for NC state and, uh, and Jalen Scott were the top two tacklers on the team. Wilson had 138 tackles, 17 and a half tackles for loss, six sacks, just he was an incredible player, three interceptions, a forced fumble, two fumble recoveries. I mean, he, was one of the top linebackers in the country last season. Uh, he's off to the NFL. Not only was he a stud linebacker, but he was also a leader on that defense. So I think it's going to be interesting to see who steps into that role, who's going to be the new leader at that linebacker position. Also, you lose Jalen Scott. So now, Scott's a guy who didn't have the amount or didn't have the stats that Wilson did. He still had 74 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, uh, forced fumble, fumble recovery in there. So Scott was the second leading tackler for the Wolfpack this past season. So another solid, solid player that NC State's losing at that linebacker position. So at that position, I mean, you got to keep an eye on because you lose the two starters in Wilson and Scott, uh, uh, Sean Brown, Caden Fordham, Kamal Bonner, excuse me, Wyatt Wright might mix in there, Devin B Betty, uh, Kelvon McBride. So there's a number of names that you could see uh, – kind of get in that first unit because it's pretty much an open competition. It looks like right now with the departures of Wilson and, and Scott. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see that position battle develop through the spring and I'm sure it'll bleed into fall camp. Uh, that's also a position that's super, super important on the defense, especially in that front seven. So linebacker position is one I'm going to have a close eye on, but also keep an eye on Aiden white the cornerback. Uh, he's coming back this season. I, he had a, um, a, had a pretty decent season last season, had two interceptions, 37 tackles, 10 passes defended. So he's also one of the top players on this defense dating back to last year. And now he's returning at that cornerback spot. So I think this defense should be pretty solid again, despite losing Wilson, despite losing Scott, they could take a step back just because of those losses and it's hard to replace those guys. Uh, we'll see who comes in, whether it be, you know, uh, I already mentioned their names for Brown, Fordham, Bonner, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we'll see, but that defense, I'm not super worried about it. Uh, wide receiver, I think, should be an interesting position to see develop over these next 15 spring practices and in fall camp. I mean, Kevin Concepcion had a, an incredible freshman season, 71 catches, 839 yards, 11.8 uh, yards per catch and 10 touchdowns in 2023. He was the leading receiver by far for NC State at 839 receiving yards. The next closest at 247 receiving yards. So that just shows you how much they relied on uh, on Concepcion. But I think there should be a little bit more weapons for Grayson McCall here. Justin Jolly is a name uh, to pay attention to. He's more of a tight end, maybe a flex receiver type. Uh, but he's coming over from UConn. I think he's a guy that can mix in with the wants, maybe and provide something different uh, for the receivers. There's also running backs a position to watch as well. Because uh, the leading rusher last year for NC State was Brennan Armstrong with 665 yards. And Concepcion had 320. He was the second leading rusher. So quarterback and wide receiver were your top two rushers. But you're bringing in Jordan Waters from Duke, who I think should be the leading rusher probably this season. Uh, either him or McCall. We'll see how much McCall is willing to run, how much coaches want him to run. That's more... Like I said, an answer for fall uh, once the season kicks off. But I'm excited about this offense. There's some new weapons uh, with Grayson McCall in there, with Jordan Waters and Concepcion returning. Uh, yeah, there there are some concerns that I think we'll get a little bit of answers here in the spring at the linebacker position as well. But look, there's a lot of signs pointing up for NC State, whether it be the expanded playoff, uh, the continuity on the staff. I think this team has a bright future and i'm excited to see them develop throughout the spring and heading into that spring game which which will be in a couple months or so so if you like this content like nc state football hit that subscribe button uh, we cover nc state we cover acc football we cover all of college football we're doing a ton of spring previews here over the next couple of weeks 
Uh, so drop that or hit that subscribe button, drop a like on this video, and we'll see you at the next one.